Marshall Harris here. The big news we've been waiting to hear as official finally is the Bears have fired head coach Matt Nagy and general manager Ryan Pace. Nagy out after four seasons and no playoff wins. Pace gone after seven seasons in charge of football decisions at Hallis Hall. Matt Zahn joining me now to discuss a big day for the Bears franchise, a, a, a chance for a change of hands, changing of the guard, if you will. And we're just now finding out, Matt, that uh, the structure of how this thing is going to go down in terms of replacing these two uh, is going to be a little different than when they hired Matt Nagy. Of course, that was a big hire by Ryan Pace. Now we have a situation where there's going to be a five-person committee headed by team chairman George McCaskey. Uh, what do you make of the decision to not only get rid of Matt Nagy, which was kind of an assumption since way back uh, Thanksgiving week, maybe even earlier than that after losing uh, eight out of nine games, but now to have a new general manager come in as well. Yeah, well, kind of a lot to unpack with this, Marshall. First of all, you know, I say the Bears sort of won the day with their fans when they did make the decision to get rid of Ryan Pace along with Matt Nagy. I think that's pretty much what all fans had wanted. We weren't sure if they were going to actually get rid of Ryan Pace as general manager after these seven years. Of course, there was some talk that he might even be promoted within the organization. That did not happen. He is gone. Now, you talked about this search committee in charge of finding the new GM. Now, therein lies maybe the problem. Bears fans excited about those changes in the morning, but then this afternoon when we hear George McCaskey do his press conference, it kind of sounds like it's going to be more of the same old, same old. Yes, they're including Bill Poley the longtime NFL executive on this search committee, but heading it up basically is going to be George McCaskey and team president Ted Phillips. So not a lot seems like it's changing in that aspect in this, which has failed seemingly over and over and over. Tanisha Wade also will be on that, the senior vice president of diversity, uh, equity and inclusion, and also uh, uh, the vice president of player engagement, Soup Campbell. Lamar Soup Campbell will be on that committee as well. So you've got five guys, but George McCaskey saying ultimately it will be his decision. And the big difference is uh, this new general manager will report directly to him. Ted Phillips now kind of takes over the whole, are we getting a new stadium in Arlington? Uh, uh, heights or not and that's kind of where he is and where his energy is by the way uh, news on that is they're, they're expecting something to happen by the first quarter of next year in terms of uh, whether or not they'll make that purchase and head in that direction if you will uh, also just want to make a quick note that they're saying they're still engaging with the city about possibly staying in, in the downtown area they just had a conversation a few weeks ago about that. So a lot, as you said, to unpack from this over one hour press conference with George McCaskey. The players spoke before that and, and we heard from them as well. One of the things that I found very interesting is George McCaskey was asked whether or not they needed to hire a new general manager before hiring a new head coach. Here's what he had to say about that. Ideally, the general manager would be selected first. But if we see a head coach candidate that we think is the right one, we're going to do what it takes to get him in-house. If I could just follow up real quickly, though, in terms of a general manager with unfettered control of the football operation, wouldn't that restrict you a little bit if you had already chosen a coach before he, he came on board? I think with Bill's guidance, we're going to be able to find um, a partnership of general manager and a head coach that will work. Um, like I said, we would prefer to hire the general manager first. So you hear what he has to say about the fact that the coach could be hired before the GM. At first, I was like, wait, wait, that's not a good idea. But then I realized this is a team that didn't, you know, buck against history, if you will, and fire their coach before the end of the season. That's a longstanding century old tradition, century old plus tradition for the Bears, Matt. And we know there will be more coaches fired. There will be coaches. Uh, it's going to be a, a run on coaches, if you will. Uh, and the Bears, if they find their guy beforehand, they're saying they will get him in house. Do you like this decision for the Bears? And are you surprised at all? Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure how much that matters. I think this the the aspect of the coach possibly getting hired before the GM. I think that's more if you're hiring one of these powerful coaches that that may want to have more control, then maybe you allow that guy 
to select the head coach. I don't know if this is – that's maybe when you bring up a guy like Jim Harbaugh. Maybe you let – you know, when you're trying to attract a coach like that, maybe you're giving him the option to be helping out in the search for the GM. I know a lot of NFL teams are doing it this way. Um, I, don't, I don't specifically have a problem with the order in which they hire him. I know traditionally you like to go GM first, then coach. But if you're getting the right coach, I don't think it matters if you do that before the GM, in my opinion. One of the other things that he talked about was, you know, the coach has to come and sh share his plan, a general manager as well, uh, looking for leaders, just strong leaders, said tough was the big adjective he used when he said, what are you looking for with these positions, with these two hires? I think it's going to be an interesting uh, winding road for the next uh, probably couple of weeks as we see how all of this uh, plays out. One of the things you mentioned, Ted Phillips, that was the guy that the GM used to report to the guy making that that call if you will that's changing is it's now going to be george mccaskey interesting though that ted phillips will still be a part of that five-man committee george mccaskey was asked well if he's not in charge anymore why is he on your committee here's what he had to say okay we don't have that sound right now but uh, matt you heard you were yeah. in on those zoom meetings as i was uh, and it's, it's curious that Phillips is going to be in there. One of the things is that he loves his instincts, and Phillips actually was on the call himself kind of defending his position because he was asked if he would bow out, but he said, hey, I've been doing this for 30-plus years. I've got good experience that can help in this search. I don't know that fans are necessarily going to agree with his uh, opinion of his, his, his self-evaluation, if you yeah, will. I, I agree with that, Marshall. I, I do not believe that the fans are happy that Ted Phillips is sticking around, at least especially in the football side of it. I, I don't think anybody would have a problem with him heading up the Arlington Heights move. But, yeah, that's what I was talking, that was talking about at the beginning, um, where they're sort of changing, but not really. You still have Ted Phillips in on your football decisions. You still have George McCaskey in charge of everything. So. You're changing, but not really changing. Uh, as uh, George McCaskey said, he trusts Ted implicitly. So he sort of talks about Ted being off to the side, but then he also talks about him being involved in everything. So there was mixed messages along the way in this entire press conference. And just so we're not misquoting or <laughs> sending mixed messages ourselves, let's hear from George McCaskey on Ted Phillips. Because I trust Ted implicitly, because I have great respect for his judgment, his analytical skills, uh, his instincts when it comes to uh, the people that we're interviewing. And in the end, he'll be negotiating the contract with the general manager and the head coach. So you, you hear what he has to say about uh, Ted Phillips. And again, Phillips was on the call himself and he was asked uh, several questions. And he, and I think he, he fully understands and is self-aware of how he's seen uh, in terms of public perception right about now, because it is a bottom line business, Matt, and the Bears have not been able to bottom line, get into the playoffs and win consistency, consistently, I should say. It's been a while since we've seen a Bears playoff win. Yeah, well, on, when it comes to Ted Phillips, on the one hand, he probably does get too much blame from the fans. He, he becomes, you know, an easy target. But then on the other hand, as I was saying before, uh, George McCaskey talks about how much he's involved in everything, so then... Well, it, it seems like he deserves some of the blame. And yes, that, this is what we're talking about, where they're changing coach and GM, but not changing at the very top. And with different coaches and different GMs, there has not been a lot of success. You're talking about it's been a while since there's been a playoff victory. This is the problem. And I don't know why Bears fans should have any belief that things are going to change as long as it's George McCaskey, Ted Phillips in charge. One of the things that uh, any GM coming in, any head coach that might, you know, assume some of the GM duties has to kind of look at is where we are with the cupboard. Is the cupboard bare for the Bears? You look at the success they've had in terms of first round picks, when they've kept them, it, it, it has not been a good track record. Uh, Roquan Smith, that, that's great. Uh, you look at some of these other guys, whether it's Mitch Trubisky, uh, Kevin White, uh, that were drafted in the first round with uh, Ryan Pace in charge, it, it has not been a great thing. And you look at this year's draft upcoming, even if you wanted to go away from Justin Fields or if you're talking about rebuilding, no first round pick, no yeah. fourth round pick. With that in mind, how, how, how much of a rebuild are the Bears looking at here, given what they have on their squad, given free agency and everything else in between? Yeah, that, that is a, the big question, I would say, at this point. You know, 
that wasn't obviously all bad what Ryan Pace has done. You mentioned some of the misses on first round picks. I think he's handled some of the free agent contracts poorly as well. But some of those late round picks have been pretty good, and that sort of helped build this foundation. There are pieces on this roster. You have Justin Fields. It's possible you have both of your starting tackles who are rookies this year. You got a couple guys on defense. You got Roquan Smith, who's a young star. Jalen Johnson looks like a quality star, a cornerback. So, and Darnell Mooney, a wide receiver, of course, as well. A couple of good running backs as well. So there are pieces here. But the whole thing hasn't come together, and the cap at times wasn't managed well. That's part of the reason Ryan Pace is out. So I, I do believe new coach, new GM, this is attractive enough to uh, you know, get the top-end guys. And, and there is stuff to work with, but you know, obviously there is work to do, or Ryan Pace probably wouldn't be getting fired. Uh, cer certainly that's, that's the case. And you look at what's going on uh, also, Matt, with the way that it's played out so far, just looking back at last season. Remember, this team did go to the playoffs two of the last four years. Also, they finished 6-11. and 11. Um, th That's the first losing season for Matt Nagy in terms of uh, regular seasons combined. But one of the, the moments of levity, if you will, or just honest moments of this, was they were asked, uh, excuse me, George McCaskey was asked about the evaluation of this team and whether or not he had talked to Virginia McCaskey and she's 99 years old, but apparently she has an opinion on, on where this team is right now. She was consulted. She was conferred with, um, as was every other member of the Bears board. Um, everybody wants to win one for her. And we're doing everything we can to make that happen. Um, at one point in our conversations, I asked her for her assessment of our season and she said as only a mother can i'm very very disappointed i mean they're trying to win one for virginia mccaskey because she's 99 years old she has endured a lot and waiting for that next bearish championship matt uh it, it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out and fans like you said, they started the day maybe celebrating that, you know, Matt Nagy is gone, Ryan Pace also gone, but it's, it's more of a, well, what's next? Yeah. Where do you go from here? And I think that's the feeling the city of Chicago has hanging over it right now. Yeah, well, going back to George McCaskey, as everyone knows, your mom being disappointed, obviously, is much worse than even her being mad. But that, that if we go back to the same stuff, that's part of the problem here with um, George McCaskey in charge. You know, his review is basically, he said the board and, the, you know, his mom approves of him. Like, there's no one really checking George McCaskey. His family owns the team, and he's not going to fire himself. So it is going to continue being this way. Now, as we move forward, <laughs> you know, that, that it, it keeps running into the same problem. Do you, do you trust George McCaskey to find the next coach? And, you know, you, you do like that he has brought in extra guys to help him out with this process. But, you know, is it going to work? I guess we'll wait and see. Certainly a wait and see approach. And one thing people talk about Bill Polian, yes, he is a Hall of Fame executive. No one is questioning his credentials over the course of his lifetime. He's also 79 years old, Matt. He's also the guy that told me that Lamar Jackson should play uh, wide receiver. So I, 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 I'm a little hesitant to just put all the faith in Bill Polian. Although I like the fact that they got outside counsel yeah. from football people or a football person per se, but did they get the right football person to help steer the ship? I guess that's, again, wait and see is the name <laughs> of the game, right? Yeah, I, you know, obviously Bill Polian has some of the best credentials of any football executive, but you know, not just that he's 79 years old, he's been out of football, I believe, for, for a decade or so. Um, and one of the things that a, a lot of Bears fans um, would have liked to seen probably with this is some former Bears in the mix in this decision-making process, maybe even just one of them. So, you know, no former players consulted at all. That's been a criticism of this. But, again, bringing in Bill Polian, I do like at least that you're having an outside voice, so it is not just on George McCaskey and Ted Phillips. Just so we can under help people understand, if, if, if you're not familiar with where, where we are, how the Bears – are viewed as a franchise. We asked a poll question about, you know, who deserves the blame for what's going on with the Bears right now. And it was Matt Nagy, it was Ryan Pace. Showing you those results now, you see it's overwhelming. Over 80% of people say it is the ownership. It is with the McCaskies. Uh, Matt, did the, the results here surprise you? I mean, 
I expected ownership to be at the top, but I don't think I expected it to be that overwhelming. Yeah, and we just keep coming back to the same thing. You know, if you're going to assess blame, it has to start and end with, with the ownership. I mean, that has what is what has remained the same through different coaches, through different GMs. The losing has continued. The ownership has stayed the same. <laughs> they're, you know, they're going to get the blame, and probably deservedly so. And, and- and one thing I did want to hit on, Matt, is before, well before George McCaskey stepped to the mic at 1 p.m., we had player availability as they do their exit interviews this morning. And it was interesting hearing from the different players and what they thought about the firings. Uh, here's David Montgomery, an emotional David Montgomery, uh, describing how he took the news that Matt Nagy, Ryan Pace were no longer with the organization. For me personally, this is a, it's kind of it's pretty emotional for me just because um you know I'm just a kid from Cincinnati who um, you know didn't have many shots coming out of high school and always being an underdog and you know Coach Campbell and Coach Lou taking a sh- chance on me going to Iowa State and then you know coming out of the draft I'm getting passed up by a lot of teams and I'm not thinking what's gonna happen to me not not knowing what's gonna happen next to me and you know Pace and, and Nagy they took a chance on me. They took a they took a chance on a kid, a poor kid from Cincinnati, who people looked at as if he wasn't gonna be good enough to even get a chance to play. And um, that's why it's emotional for me because um, you know they they stuck their neck out on the line for me, and I appreciate them for that. So um, uh, just sitting away to see what's gonna happen next. Have you had a chance to privately talk to Matt? I mean, just one on one, or or was it all just in the group meeting a few minutes ago? Uh, I've talked to him uh, one-on-one. Me and him talked together. Um, yeah. What were the emotions of that? It, feels, it seems like that, that probably was a deep conversation between the two of you, knowing how close you've been. Yeah, definitely. Um, me and Coach Nagy built a, a, a great relationship um, together um, while while we were here. Like I said, they took a chance for me, and um, I commend and I appreciate them for that. But um, since I stepped foot in here, they showed me nothing but love. Um, and I appreciate them for that. It's unfortunate what happened. Um, but at the same time, you understand this is a, a result driven um, league and we want to kind of, you know, do what we got to do so we can handle business. It is a bottom line business and David Montgomery and certainly the other Bears do understand that whether they've been in the league as a rookie or whether they've been in the league uh, for five, six, seven years, Matt, uh, the, the players, you expected them to kind of take this hard because at the end of the day, you know, players by their performance, that is a contributing factor into whether or not a coach in the front office members uh, stick around for another season. Right. And, and, and you could certainly see this is evident, uh, you know, all the way to the end that Matt Nagy was well liked, well respected as a head coach. He was uh, seemed to be a, a really good leader of men. And just, you know, as we mentioned, bottom line business, he just didn't win enough on the field. I think Matt Nagy's biggest problem in the end was that he just didn't change he didn't adapt enough he kept trying to do the same things over and over expecting different results and i actually find that interesting that matt nagy gets fired because (laughs) sort of for his refusal to change while at the top of the organization they're not changing i i see what you did there uh one player i really enjoyed listening to was uh guard james daniels who said his favorite thing about matt nagy is he made it fun they had so much fun And he talked about how, you know, the fact that when he was at Iowa, Kirk Ferentz is more of a straight-laced, old-school coach, and Matt Nagy had fun. And he went back and forth with reporters about the fact that, okay, you had fun, but you didn't win. And then he said, well, what is winning? And it was a whole back and forth, Matt. And and I think just because you're playing music at practice, that doesn't necessarily make it the right situation or the right coach. But as you said, a leader of men, and someone who got along with pretty much everyone famously is, is Matt Nagy, but it's, it's been interesting to hear what the players had to say. We heard from other players. One of them was Travis Gibson. Here's what he had to say. Obviously, it's just a part of the business, but I'm very appreciative of all the memories that I was able to make with um, Coach Nagy and Ryan Pace. So, you know, it is going to be sad, but, you know, it's, it's a part of the business, unfortunately, and there's it's really nothing in my control that I can do about it. Next question, Colleen Kane. Hey, Travis, how did this morning unfold for you guys? How did you find out the news and did you guys hear from Coach Nagy at all? 
Yes, we um, Coach Nagy announced it to us, and you know he told us how much he cared about us, and that he will always be there for us. So, you know, it's all love with Coach Nagy, and it's always going to be like that. So, I'm very appreciative of the memories that I was blessed to be able to make with him, and you know, I'll always be able to stay in touch with him. So you hear from uh, Travis Gibson, uh, Matt. The, the, one of the questions that you know Bears fans specifically won't care as much about. But I'll ask you, since uh, they are the, the two people that were dismissed today, do you see them bouncing back in, 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 in coaching roles? Uh, I mean, I guess everybody gets a job after being a head coach or a general manager, just maybe in a different capacity when you talk about Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace. Yeah, I mean, I would expect both of them to, to be back at some, in some capacity fairly soon. Matt, it'll be interesting to see if Matt Nagy comes back right away next year, wants to maybe take a, a year off. Um, as I mentioned, you know, you know, his refusal sort of to adapt, maybe just sort of taking a year off and thinking about that and looking at other schemes, things like that, that might help him. I would see him probably coming back maybe as like a, a – quarterback coach or something like that at some point um, in the near future and then you know maybe transitioning maybe he'll get it. I would I wouldn't be surprised if he got another shot at a head coaching job at some point uh, as far as Ryan Pace goes um, you know probably something on the scouting side to start I don't think he'll jump right back into a GM role but that'll, that'll be interesting to see as well and of course we're already on coaching watch general manager watch is two big hires have to be made by the Bears as we mentioned by that five-person committee uh, headed up by team chairman George McCaskey, who said ultimately he will be the one who makes the final call on that. Uh, already got reports out there. Uh, defensive coordinator for the Bills, Leslie Frazier, uh, interested in the job, or the Bears are interested in him. Uh, you've got other people. You can go through the college ranks. You can go down the retread path. You can go down to a coach that was just fired today, Brian Flores, who yeah. put together a seven-game winning streak and won eight of nine as someone the Bears may be interested in. Uh, do you have any favorites that you would like to see them at least talk to? Yeah, you know, at, at, at this point, there, there's so many potential candidates out there. It, it's hard to pin down one um, a, as a favorite. It, you know, um, you know, obviously Bears fans w w would like to see Jim Harbaugh back here, but I, I don't know if that's even a possibility at this point. You know, the, the list of coaching candidates is long. The list of GM candidates is long. But, as we talked about the order of things before, you know, if, if you're hiring the GM first, well, then that will play a big role in who you're hiring as head coach. If you hire that coach first, maybe it doesn't matter so much. So, you know, it, it's going to be a bit of a process, I think. And, you know, there are a lot of quality coaches out there, I think, that they could choose from. You know, often these NFL teams, when they, when they make a change, they'll go the opposite direction. So Nagy was an inexperienced offensive guy, so maybe they do go in that experienced defensive direction. As long as they get a, a whiz of an offensive coordinator, that right. can work yeah. out for the Bears. <laughs> but that's the thing you have to do when you have a young second-year quarterback who will be a second-year quarterback, that is, in Justin Fields coming up. Uh, again, Marshall Harris, Matt Zahn with you to tell you about the firing of both head coach Matt Nagy and general manager Ryan Pace, also gone after seven seasons, four years coaching for Matt Nagy, uh, one big 12-4 and four season, which uh, kind of looks like smoke and mirrors when you look back at it now compared to what happened in the following three seasons. We've got much more coming up your way on CBS2 at 5 p.m. Until then, for Matt Zahn, Marshall Harris saying thanks for joining us here on CBSN.